Judith Linges of Mill Creek is going to give, do something for me just to, to top off this whole afternoon, okay? I love creme brulee. Uh, it's my favorite dessert of all time and always will be. But Judith is going to do pumpkin cream brulee. Great. And that just sounds wonderful. Well, okay, I'm, let's cook. I'm happy to share it because I'm tired of pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and so I worked with this because everybody likes creme brulee and I yep. wanted to make sure yep. that we can make something light. And the nice thing about this one is um, you can make it with cream. We have the cream already heating on the stove. Mm -hmm. You can make it with whipping cream or you can use evaporated milk, which is much lighter in color. Right, right. And the texture is hardly any different. Right, yeah. right. Still sets up quite nicely. So where do we start? We're going to start by putting our egg yolks in here. Now, folks, I think this is ingenious. She's mixing her whole base right in this pitcher. Exactly. And this is very fast. Adding the sugar. sugar, sugar next, and pureed pumpkin. This is solid packed Libby's pumpkin with no spices. Right, this is just the pumpkin, just not pump. the pumpkin pie That's right. filling. And if you use fresh pumpkin, if you would yeah. steam it or roast mm -hmm. it and, and puree it. it, make sure that it's strained to get the extra fibers yeah. out because they would be too rough for this delicate dessert. And all the while we're watching the cream, it's mm -hmm. just going to steam and bubble at the edges, we're not going to boil it. Okay. Right, and we need it to about 180 degrees. And to tell if it's there, you're going to see little bubbles around the outside of the pan and right. like steam rising off. And you well, know what? That's, a, that's about 180. I see little right. bubbles and steam coming off. You, you can ready? tell by putting your finger in, can't you? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> usually you jump back really quickly and then you know, oh, it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not quite ready. We're going to add the spices in here. And at the very end, we'll add our vanilla. We mustn't forget that. Ah, Don't forget yes. the vanilla. And it's important not to overbeat this because we don't want it all creamy and fluffy like you would if it was a sponge Right, cake. we don't want it to puff up. No, very light. And so while we're you ready, ready for this, it's ready. You, okay, we're ready. Let's do it. Yeah, are you going to put that in afterwards? Is that right? After the cream. Okay. And we're going to just add it slowly and mix at the same time. And the nice thing about having something glass like this is that you can see if you're mixing it. Right. And if there's any lumps of pumpkin in the bottom or anything like that. I never thought of using a, a big pitcher like that as a mixer. Or a big well, measuring cup works really well. Then you can yeah. pour it into the bowl. It's important that you pour rather than from a bowl that slops all over the place. Yeah. Now you see we've got pumpkin in the bottom. On the there. bottom, but it's coming up. Yeah, that's a good coming idea, up. Carol. Yeah, this guy's scoop that up. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that looks good. And, and in goes the, oh. the all-important vanilla. Uh -huh. It has to be pure, too. None of this essence mm, fake stuff. That smells great already. No. So I've got the dishes in here ready, because I don't want to cart them around when they're full. And so, That's so good. this is a serving of eight, and we're just filling up four here right now. Right. If you were doing four, you'd have to halve the recipe, of course. Oh, okay. And this recipe is not that easy to halve in as far as how do you halve a third of a cup? Not easy even if you eyeball it in a glass thing. So you know what I do? I measure it all out in tablespoons. That's a good well, idea. That's idea. One third you know what else I found is that you can actually, once this is cooked, you can freeze it, and then when you want creme brulee another day, yes. you have it in the freezer. And if you do it fresh, you can do it two days in advance. Yes. Do you want me to pour it? Okay. Okay. Can I pull this out for you? So no, you it's have all right. A, a spot? I'll just, no, it's okay. I, w I won't get it inside. So and we're adding hot water. Yes. Up. And halfway up. Halfway up the dish. Halfway up the custard cups. And if you go any further, you're going to have very runny, gooey uh -huh. custard. And it won't be any good at all. Looks and then it, it goes in a 350 oven or 325 convection. OK. Do you want me to get that? I've got it. OK. And uh, for about 40 minutes, depending on your oven. And when it comes out, it should be firm, and a knife should come out clean. About 40 minutes. Yes. So, so then, to put it all together it took what, about five or ten? Very quick, very yeah. easy. Yeah. So, so then, so then, one. then when you're it comes take out it of the oven, we're going to cool it at room temperature on a rack. Mm -hmm. When it's cool, very tightly wrap it in saran wrap. And the reason that you want to do that is so that you don't get all the other smells of the fridge right. getting into your lovely delicate yes. custard. Can and you, you don't want a skin on top either. That's right. Well, actually, I forgot to mention what you could do is put a piece of foil over the top of the custards in the oven and that prevents the skin okay. from forming. Okay. But I don't really care if I've got skin because by the time you put the sugar on it right. all disappears. Yeah, yeah. 
So now you've got your cooled custard in about an hour before serving time. Not before. Not before. No, do you know why? No. Because if you did this a while before and then you put it back in the fridge after you've caramelized your sugar, it would it melt. It softens back oh, up. It goes all liquid and it's all gooey and yeah. numb. And we want a nice crisp Indeed. crunchy. Indeed. No. Creme so, is, is a cream. I mean and it's it's, it's should be hard on top. And hard on top, yeah. soft and delicate Beautiful underneath. Idea. So when they come out of the fridge, pat them dry like this with a little piece mm -hmm. of paper towel. You get a little bit of moisture yeah. on there because you want that sugar to stick. And this sugar has been sitting up for 24 hours. And the reason is I like to use brown sugar. Mm -hmm. You can sieve it through if you like or you can just sprinkle it on top and spread it around. If you use it fresh, not sitting out like I did, it would be all sticky. And this oh, separates. Okay. So it's been drying mm -hmm. as it sits it's out. Mm -hmm. And so you can put about half a teaspoon on top mm -hmm. because you want to burn it all the way through. If you put more, you'll have raw you sugar get, under Yeah, you get little grains Crystals. of sugar and it doesn't feel Excuse nice me. in your mouth okay. later. No. So this is a wonderful tool that I got at the hardware store. It's a, a blowtorch. This is another one. Maybe we can take a, a close up of it. It's a, I have never seen it before. Uh, and these are wonderful because they're much easier than stick it un under the broiler. Mm -hmm. If you put this under the broiler, you'd have to put it in a, a bath of ice because your custard would heat up and then the texture would change. Yeah. Nobody tells you that, but it really no. does happen. And so uh, this is about two or three inches away from the top of your custard. And it should be really liquefying, ideally. You can spread sugar your sugar should around. should be bubbling. It should be yeah. bubbling it will and, and burning. Well, there, it's well. starting to do that now. Because yep. that's what it means, doesn't it? Burnt Brulee sugar. means burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, burnt sugar. So we've got an English custard with a French name. <laughs> really, isn't it? Yes. And the whole world loves it, so you know. That's yes, really getting around, huh? All so kinds of flavors. Ideally, this should be hard. So what I do is do it twice if you want a super duper crispy topping. And uh, you just keep going gently around and uh, if your torch gives up, I always have another one just in case. Sure. Always but good to have a backup. Yeah. Did I say that it was half the price? Yes. At the hardware store compared to a kitchen shop? And it's much easier than the broiler because most broilers aren't very even and you've got to keep moving cool. your dishes Indeed. around. Yeah. yeah. They and really it's should hotter, improve so the, that. The broiler takes a long time to do this. In commercial restaurants, they have a thing called a salamander, which yes. gets so incredibly hot yes. that they can do it there. But I've heard about them. Home broilers don't get that hot. You should invent a, a, a better design, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> In my spare time. Imagine how famous you'd be if you're not already. I've heard about your fame. Anyway, so that's how it happens. That's beautiful. That but is, that's, that is that's not as solid as I would like it. I would like to put some more on top and do it okay. again. You know, I'll so. put a little more on top. Okay. And if you get flames happening, they either go out on their own or you can just blow them out. It's not mm -hmm. a big deal. And uh, you get a little bit of smoke, but as long as you hold it away far enough, you're okay. And there's yeah. creme brulee. And there we are. you know what's really great about this? You can do it two days in advance. And you've got all those egg whites for a second dessert. That's right. You can make a wonderful oh, souffle. Yeah, or you could make a meringue or, or a angel food cake. Angel food cake. Oh, wow. Pavlova. Great idea. So, should we leave it at this? I one? think we should taste. Well, oh, I think we should too. We've got some finished ones over there. Okay. That are cool. But if you want it hot. Yeah, let's try the one. We'll try we this just, one. Yeah. You want it fresh, don't you? We'll sure. just let that have a second to cool there. Mm. You ready? ready? Yep, go ahead. It's silky smooth custard. It's oh lovely. Oh my goodness. Very, very nice. And you could add more spices if you wanted mm. it heavier. Mm-hmm. All of the wonderful meals we've had here today. And this, this is was the dessert, the folks, right here. This was the fastest and the easiest, wasn't it? And the, it's really good. The brown mm. sugar is a nice complement mm -hmm. to pumpkin. Very yeah, nice. I think the very brown nice. is better than white. Now, is it, is it a problem if it gets black on top like that? No, it's no. supposed to be black like that. Okay. The darker, the better, actually. Oh, yeah, that is. That's, <laughs> that's very crusty. <laughs> I'm just going to take another little bit of this. Mm hmm Wonderful. Thank you. Just very, very, very nice. Thank you. Okay. Pardon me, but it's really good. If you haven't called in yet, we're getting toward the very end. This has been 
beyond, beyond any doubt, the best cooking show we've ever done with the best recipes we've ever had. And they just all fit together beautifully, even the dessert or any meal that we've had this afternoon or this morning. So please, make the telephone call and do yourself and your family and your friends and the people you care most about a huge favor by doing some of these dishes for their enjoyment. Call us right now. Thank you very, very oh, much. Yeah, this is great. Wonderful. Lovely to be here.